Welcome, Crusaders. Thanks for joining me for Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. We're on our way out here from the Hell Knight outpost and ran into Paralictor Renth here. Uh, he's got some stuff for sale, but it, it appears that Social would like to talk to this guy, so we'll see what happens here. I'm listening. Regil looks at Socio with contempt. Despite their difference in height, it seems it's the gnome who is looking down on his counterpart. You wanted to ask me about something? I'm listening. Socio lowers his head with cold respect. Thank you for finding the time to listen to me. It, it regards a personal matter. There was a woman in your squad. She perished, covering our retreat, and I don't even know her name. But she carried this shield. It once belonged to my brother. Do you happen to know how she came to have it? A personal matter, of course. How silly of me to expect a relevant question, Regil chuckles. After savoring the expression on Sosil's face, he continues. Her name was Marenta, and she turned out to be a better soldier than I thought. Too bad she still wasn't good enough to survive. She'd transferred to us from the Order of the Nail, the Extirper Extirpators chapter, if memory serves me right. I wasn't interested in her reasons for changing chapters, and she never gave any. Such transfers are not forbidden, though they are not encouraged. In any case, she already had the shield when she came to us, and the only way to find out where she got it from is to ask at her former chapter. But the gods only know where they are now and which demons they are slaughtering. Thank you for your answer, Paralictor. With cold politeness, Socio lowers his head and bows before the knight, then turns to you. It seems I have reached a dead end. Uh, the Hell Knights don't value the lives of their warriors very highly. You don't say. I cannot believe Trevor could have had anything to do with them. He's always been so kind and tried to help everyone. If only I had a chance to talk to her while she was still alive. Socio looks away. I sound so selfish. She died, and all I talk about is what she could have done for me. But it's not only that. This shield was Trevor's treasure. He wouldn't have given it away for no reason. How did this woman get it? Did she deceive Trevor? Kill him? Or perhaps the opposite. She meant so much to him that he gave her the shield voluntarily. I keep mulling it over, trying to understand, trying to imagine what happened to my brother and what role Marenta played in this story. If she was still alive, maybe I'd have to exact my vengeance for my brother on her. Or maybe we'd sit next to each other and she'd tell me all about their adventures together. She might have become my mortal enemy or a sworn sister, but she's dead. She's just dead. None of that will happen now, do you understand? The cleric's voice trembles. Perhaps we'll meet these extirpators. I shall pray that we do, but I won't hold my breath. Sosil shakes his head. Let's talk about this later. I need time to gather my thoughts. Okay, so we got a little update there on a Socials quest. Didn't quite expect that. I just can't seem to get to this loot back here. I don't know. These guys are blocking it and can't get it from up there. All right. So it's time to head out from here. I don't know if Regil's coming with us or if he's going to bug out here at the exit. Um, we'll head back out to the map. And see where we are. Um, I'm not sure what we want to do next here, really. We haven't, we've been kind of focusing on companion quests here for a while. So maybe just talking to him again back in Dresden would actually uh, move this along. So maybe we head back there. At some point, we got the Nameless Ruins with Nenio. I, I don't think we've found any additional clues, though, as to that puzzle. We're waiting for an opportune moment for Finian, and we're waiting to see how things unfold here uh, for... Who's this one? Wayward. Um, I don't even remember whose quest this is. And then Borrowed Dreams, we've got just a lot of people to talk to around Dresden. So we could go back. This is Arushala's, right? We need to uh, 
find out about their dreams. We could go back to Dresden. We could just maybe uh, hit a new spot on the map that we haven't we haven't done any just kind of like exploration for a while, so maybe we'll head out and see what we find out there. So apparently Regil is just gonna like stick around with us now. I didn't realize we were recruiting him by uh, coming out here to the outpost, but I guess we did. So we're not far from Dresden, so maybe we make our way back there. But we could, we could go home by way of up here. Oh, this is we'll just quest. Okay, that won't work. So, um. Crimson dust. We're we're close. Let's let's just head down here. Oh, or not? Maybe this node up here. Yeah. Okay. So maybe. Oh, this is like up on a, a ledge. It looks like. We probably have to get there from like down here. All right, we're not going clear down there. Blackwater. Is this related to a quest? Oh, uh, yeah. The last gift of a brilliant mind. Kellogg by the name of Velg has pointed the commander toward a possible location where a settlement of the Blackwater clan once stood. Records show that these Sarkorians were working on some sort of ultimate weapon capable of defeating the world wound. They did not get the chance to finish their project, but some of their progress may have survived. Hmm. We've got some demon armies in the way of getting there, so we would need to send out our army first to hit them I think we're gonna go back to Dresden actually let's let's switch over to can we just switch into the campaign from here yeah okay where is our uh, main army they're down there let's actually bring them over here and at least see if we can clear the way over here. Maybe this black water will be our uh, next destination. Okay, we got our army over here. This one may actually want to fight us. It's been a while since we've actually had a fight. They've been just running away from us. Oh, we just got two stacks of Glebrazu. Well, let's... Oh, we've got... I forgot we have summoned elementals. We've never gotten to use this. Uh, but I think... Fireball here. Is that not going to hit both of them? Apparently not. Oh, it did hit both. It actually completely killed that one. Alright. And we're done. Our army is, uh, seems like gotten pretty strong, at least for the the ones that are on our level. Okay, we got some materials points for that. Let's see if we can continue clearing this road. Fireball. Yeah. And those guys are down. Whoa, they got some uh, large stacks here. Oh, these sorcerers, they're a melee unit, but they actually do have magic missiles, which we should have used. I don't know why I walked up there. And then, yeah, it's been so long, I don't even know what we have now. These, these are paladins. Only 22 of them. They've got some healing. Let's... Just hold them back here then. Alright, the cultists are down. We've just got this stack of giant spiders to deal with. Then we'll have this 
path cleared, it looks like. Will a fireball finish them off? Not quite. There we go. Nice. I would think our general is getting close to leveling up, maybe. Stone of Ghostly Pathways. Okay. So, this road should be open now. Do we want to head there? No. Okay, we got the road cleared, but we're going to head back to Dresden and take care of a few things there. Get the, the party that we want, and then we'll head to Blackwater next. At least that's the plan for now. Okay. And maybe while we're here, we'll just uh, take care of talking to people. Let's head to the streets. We can take care of a lot of those out here, it looks like. Work on Arusula's dream study. Okay, one of the people we need to talk to is Arsino over here. So before we go too far into the city, let's head over there. Arsino, I have a question for you. One that might seem strange, but as the commander, I need to know your answer. What do you dream of? That is a rather strange question indeed. But if it's an order, I will answer. There is a saying, one can't win a war and keep their gloves white, yes. I do understand that there isn't much time and energy left for landscaping when you're fighting hordes of demons to death every day, but Abadar knows how I'd love to see Dresden neat and tidy for just one day. No missing cobbles in the street, everything sparkling clean, flower beds blooming, all the lawns trimmed, glory and order instead of all this filth. Cool. While we're here, let's see if we need to buy anything. I feel like we're pretty good. I haven't really used much here since the last time we kind of stocked up, so that's it for now over here. So let's head back up into the city. We need to talk to Chiar, Fi, Horgus, Nura, Hylor, Storyteller, and the One-Eyed Devil. Let's see, Nora, Nura is in prison, right? We could head over there. And there she is. Come to gloat. I have a question for you, one that might seem strange, but as the commander, I need to know your answer. What do you dream of? Well, we could release her if we wanted to. Or execute her. <laughs> I hope a swarm of Vescavores takes over Dresden and feasts on your bones. All right. Uh, you know what? Nah, we're not letting her go. Sorry. Nura scoffs at you. Maybe maybe eventually we'll have a, a change of heart and decide to let Nura free. But we'll let her suffer a little bit longer. I don't think we're going to execute her, though. Okay, Shiar... Is up there in the one-eyed devil, so we can head over this way. Chiar looks old and shriveled. His gray hair seems to have become even thinner. He looks at you, lost, and smiles sadly as if out of habit. Yes. I've got a question for you, one that might seem strange, but as the commander, I need to know your answer. What do you dream of? Sighing heavily, the old man's gaze looks over your head into the distance. So many young men and women have laid down their lives in this war. They came here young and fearless just to wind up dead. Bringing them all back to life. That's my dream. Thank you very much. Okay, then the one-eyed devil should be right up here. Here we go. The fine day to you, Commander. After greeting you loudly, the tiefling looks around cautiously and continues in a whisper. Tell me, is it true that Iomade herself made you her chosen one? I ask because there are rumors in the army, and I have been offered a tidy sum to procure a few of your nail clippings. 
Some believe they heal all disease. It's up to you, of course, but if you want to make some money, what do you say? Uh, I don't think so. I want to know about your dreams. When I get rich, I'll retire. I'll go to Taldor and buy a villa by the sea from some broke noble. Maybe even buy their title. I'll surround myself with such luxuries that even ancient Talden emperors will envy me from the afterlife. I'll have a pipe organ in my dining room and have it played while I dine. Oh, and harps and bells. Right then. Uh, let's check in with his supply here while we're here. Oh, we're not, I guess. Okay. Um, so that leaves. Storyteller, High Lore, Horgus, and Fi. Oh, we walked right by Horgus. Okay. Get him. I don't remember where High Lore is. Horgus, what do you dream about? I'm well past my prime. I have seen far too much death to be afraid of dying myself, but I don't want to get old. However, if one has enough money, one can bribe time itself. Take Queen Galfrey. I wish I could afford the magic potion she has been using to stay young for over a century. So, eternal life, I guess, there, Horgum. Now, so, Storyteller, Hylor, Fi. Who is Fi? I don't even know who that is. Fi? Oh, is that the bartender, maybe? I think maybe that's the bartender in the inn. But Hylor, Hylor, Hylor. Um, is Hylor the uh, like Pathfinder Society guy? Where is he hanging out? Barracks, maybe? Where's Hylor? Where is Hylor? Um, is he in the Citadel? Since we're close to the tavern, Let's go check in there. I'm pretty sure that Fi is the, the tavern keeper. If I'm wrong about that, then we'll have to figure out who that is. I think he's the guy sitting on the... Yeah, okay. I've got a question for you. One that might seem strange, but as the commander, I need to know your answer. What do you dream of? Fi doesn't seem at all surprised by the question. Well-being, prosperity, and dwarven whiskey. I once had a taste of the stuff they distill under the mountains. Since then, I've dreamed of getting a still like the ones they use. But they're secretive and don't share their inventions. A pity. Cool. All right. So, two more. Storyteller. And Hylor. So, um, we need to rest, so let's pop back to inside the citadel and see if maybe Hylor's hanging in there. I don't think so. Let me go to check the barracks then. It wouldn't surprise me if we have some uh, something here waiting for us in the uh, war room. Yeah. Sila. Sila seems to be in a good mood. She smiles at you and then scratches the back of her head as if suddenly realizing something. I probably shouldn't have come to you officially, like to an audience, but this is the only way to catch you these days. I wanted to ask, would you like to go shopping with me? <laughs> uh, yeah. It's probably not right to distract the Knight Commander with such trifles, but I thought I should drag you out for a walk. We haven't enjoyed a moment's peace since we met. We've either been saving Canabras or marching on Dresden. Besides, I desperately need advice. I'm going to buy a present, and I know nothing about fancy jewelry. Who are you buying the present for? For Elon and his bride. After that story at the camp, when Curl stole the ring from us and summoned the demons, Elon and I both overreacted and said some things we shouldn't have. He apologized to me, but I haven't really apologized to him. I want to buy a ring to replace the one that was stolen. And there's a new jewelry shop in Dresden. It's owned by Sunhammer, the same jeweler who made the first ring. All right, great idea. I'd love to stretch my legs for a bit. Great, then I'll meet you at the jewelry shop. It's in the east of the city. Cool. Okay. 
Yeah, nothing else going on here right now. Uh, yeah, Hylar's not in here. Where does he hang out? I think maybe... Would he be at the barracks? I guess maybe we'll go check there. No, it says he's on the streets. That's the, the Bar of Dreams. Okay. The storyteller is right down here. Let's go see him. The blind elf whispers something under his breath. Hearing our steps, he turns to you slowly. Greetings, Zeke. Have you brought me a new story? I've got a question for you. It might seem strange, but I need to know your answer. What do you dream of? Oh, I haven't been surprised by a strange question for a long time. Especially not when, beside you, I hear the weightless tread of a succubus who has stepped onto the path of redemption. No wonder she wants to know more about mortals and their dreams. Perhaps my dream will disappoint you, child. And still, I will answer. I have to admit, I suffer from insomnia. Every night, as soon as I lie down, the ghosts of those who are remembered and those who are forgotten stand around my bed. The stories I have gathered swarm in my head. My mattress becomes hard like stone and my pillow ice cold. Maybe if I had a softer bed, I would fall asleep quicker. Although I suppose it's not about the bed. Okay. One left. Ilor, who we have no idea where he is. Uh, I didn't... I did not see a, a marker for him, but let me check again. Let's go look down here, like, by Wolgif and the blacksmith. I'm wondering if he's, like, inside somewhere, though. One of these buildings. It's, it's not one, though, that we can teleport to directly. Yeah. So, could be inside that house could be in the temple maybe not the barracks because we could we can teleport there i uh, wasn't in the prison was he i don't think i guess he could have been in the tavern i just didn't look in there actually that would make sense if he is the pathfinder society guy he might be hanging out in the tavern all right let's go check there that's we need to Go back to Arushla there anyway, so we'll go see if he's there. All right, is he like over here somewhere? Gray boar is in here. We march ahead. Dang it, hi, Lord. Where are you? Is he upstairs in here? Oh, I think maybe he is. Is there an upstairs? There's not an upstairs in here. Hmm. Okay, Arusula, we're close. We just need to find Hylor. I'm sh pretty sure I'm remembering that correctly. That he's the like Pathfinder recruiter guy. So where where is he? Just outside here somewhere. Oh, the inn. I bet he's in here. Upstairs in here. That's what I'm thinking of. Please. Yeah, okay. Whew. It's good to see you. What can I do for you? Would you like to renew your forces with excellent fighters? No, we just want to hear about your dreams. I'd give everything away to see my lovely little girl, Lori, again, one last time. Thank you. All right, so we can go back to Arushala. I think that's everybody, isn't it? Okay, Arushala, have we got some stories for you. I asked some of the city's people about their dreams. Is this enough for you? Yes. I, you can't even imagine how many new dreams I have in there now. Let's go. I want to show you everything I've got. The succubus once again takes you by the hand to bring you into the dream realm. So there's going to be a lot going on in here now. 
This was a pretty uh, bleak place last time. Okay, it's still pretty bleak. Arushala's dream is no longer empty. You arrive to discover an avalanche of voices, scents, and images. The smell of Anivia's fresh bread intertwines with the stench of the Templar's fresh blood from her wife's dream. The bells and harp strings produce the sweet melodies the one-eyed devil wished for. The storyteller's luxurious bed makes your eyelids heavy, and the trimmed lawn on which it stands would have filled Arsinoe's heart with utter joy. Do you see how many different things are in here? I, now I, too, can dream like a mortal. Okay, this is still a little bit different, I would say. <laughs> Congratulations, I'm genuinely happy for you. Uh, yeah, they aren't your own. Hmm. Looks like a pile of trash. <laughs> uh, no, congratulations. I'm happy for you. Thank Desna, and thank you for your help. I would have never collected all these dreams without you. Would you like to take a closer look? Feel free to explore my dreams and do tell me if they look like the things mortals dream about. Maybe you'll give me some hints on how to make them better. Let us press on. Well, yeah, you've outdone yourself here, Arusula. <laughs> We've got a Vescovore swarm over here. Who was dreaming about that? Can't remember that. Uh, we got some weaponry here. Amber-colored liquid with the bewil bewildering aroma is dripping steadily from the pipe of the pot still. Oh, here's Lori, Ilor's daughter. Okay. I don't know. Originally, as dreams go, this is still uh, pretty weird. Soft bed is tempting you to have a little rest. We march ahead. Okay. Well, uh, I would. I guess it's an improvement. Okay. None of these dreams are your own. What's the point in collecting other people's reveries? No need to be so harsh. It's my first dream ever. It's a miracle I'm able to have one at all. I would have never collected all these dreams without you. What? Yeah, we've already been through this. How do we leave? Oh, I didn't see it. I didn't notice this ravenous shadow over here. Arushala, my venomous butterfly. Wait, be careful, Zeke. Where are you, my darling? We used to be as happy as the canopy of stars. Leave me alone. Go away. Let me have a taste of your sweetest venom one last time. Thought that was going to turn into a nightmare. Okay. Well. You open your eyes to find Arushala looking at you wide-eyed. The demon is breathing heavily. Droplets of sweat glitter on her pale face. She does not notice right away that she is squeezing your palm with her delicate burning fingers. But when she does, she turns red and jerks her hand back instantly. I'm sorry. You weren't supposed to see that. I didn't want you to. I didn't even want to see that myself. Who was that? An old friend from days long gone. That shadow. I wanted to erase him from my memory once and for all. That nickname he gave me, Venomous Butterfly, was the last thing I ever wanted to hear again. I tried to forget about all that, and I almost su succeeded, but now he's haunting my newfound dreams. Why? Everything was going so well. Arushala shakes her head. This must be what mortals call nightmares, right? I guess this is another confirmation that I'm now fully exploring the dream world. But will I be brave enough to enter it again, knowing that he is waiting for me there? There are so many things I still have to learn. Mortals usually find ways to deal with their nightmares, and so will I. I thank you for your help. And I'm sorry that you had to watch that awful spectacle unfold. The succubus gets to her feet. Now please excuse me, I need to spend some time alone to think about everything I've just seen. Uh, did that, that finished up that part of the quest, I guess, at least. We need to meet Sila at the jewelry shop, and I wanted to talk to... Sosil. Well, I think the jewelry shop is on the way to where Sosil is. Isn't that jewelry shop like 
Right down here somewhere. Is this the one? Like right there. And then... Oh, Socio's back up by the Citadel. Okay. I think this is where we're going. Right in here. No sign of Sela, but maybe she's inside. Aha. Uh -huh. Derek Sunhammer. Do my eyes deceive me? The victorious Knight Commander himself has paid a visit to my shop. Such an honor. Such an honor. A dignified dwarf in a luxurious, beautifully adorned garment bows to you before turning to Sela. You are most welcome as well, Iomedes Faithful. It is a pleasure to see so many brave crusaders within these walls. I am Derek Sunhammer, the jeweler. This shop is one of many that I own. Ah, Master Derek himself. I heard the only place one is likely to bump into you is at a royal reception. Not at all. My wares are expensive, not least because I have to buy costly metals and gems and also pay for the security of shops and workshops throughout Mendev and beyond its borders. My prices limit the circle of my clientele, but that doesn't mean I myself shun all those not in possession of a noble title. Master Derek gives you a warm smile. I must say again, I am very glad to see you here. Sela wants to talk to you about something. You have my full attention. The dwarf stokes, strokes his beard. It's simple, Master. You might remember that a while ago, Sir Elon of the Hound Hearts ordered a ring from you, a silvery ring with a green, blue-green gem. I would like to buy something similar, but I only have this much money. Sela shows him her coin purse. If what Sela is offering is not enough, I will help. Come on, Zeke. Sela is embarrassed. I only invited you along for advice. I can handle the expenses myself. Oh, I would advise you not to reject the commander's help out of hand. With his participation, I can offer you something truly special that fits your description perfectly. A ring with a blue-green gem, just as you've described. This is one of my latest creations, and I'm very proud of it. Alas, your own funds, my dear, are only enough for my plainest ring. And the gem in it is not the right color. Ah, uh, that's fine. We'll give you uh, what you need. We need the very best. Sela sends you a grateful look. Master Derek lowers his head respectfully and retrieves a box from the bag on his belt, opening it to reveal an exquisite ring with a glittering blue-green jewel. He lets the light play on the gem's facets and then places the box in Sela's hand. This is a special item, and I'm glad to see it go to someone as worthy as yourself. For how could the commander's friend be anything but... May it bring good fortune to its owner. Now, if you'll excuse me, I don't usually make sales in my own shops. I have golems for that. Besides, I prefer spending my time at my workbench, not behind the counter. But I was glad to serve you, Commander, and your valiant companion. All the best. Well, that's done. Sela stows the ring box. Come with me to the barracks to give the ring to Elon, will you? After that, we can go to the tavern and have a few drinks. Are you happy with what you bought? Well, yes. The truth is, I just needed a reason to talk to him and show that I want us to patch things up. I'm not great at this friendship stuff, but I'm trying. Okay, let's go. Oh, okay, we're teleporting there. Or uh, slow walking, as the case may be. Having a little conversation with Sela along the way. Elon of the Hound Hearts. Sela, Knight Commander. Elon seems a little discomfited. Good to see you. Not this again. Well, to avoid a drawn-out conversation, I'll just get to the point. I got you a gift. It's, well, a ring to replace the one Curl stole. Oh, Sela, thank you so much. You shouldn't have. I've already apologized to you for how I behaved back at this camp. And I'll say it again, I don't blame you for anything. We fought shoulder to shoulder here in Dresden. Can't we just let bygones be bygones? Sure we can, but take the present. Your wedding is right around the corner. Sela puts the ring in the knight's hand. Do you still distrust me and the power I've been granted, Elon? The knight endures your look and answers smoothly. Yes, Commander, I still have my doubts. I'm just a warrior. I have faith in the gods' will. But I'm used to relying on things I can understand. Things I know. An honest sword. A prayer passed down through the generations. Don't take it as a sign of disrespect. 
It would be more disrespectful to lie to your face. Did you know that we found Janna? After she ran off, she was taken prisoner by demons. So I heard, and I'm not surprised. She didn't just let us down. She let herself down, too. By the way, when is the long-awaited wedding? Very soon. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. It would be a tremendous honor if you would come to my wedding. We're going to hold it not far from the walls of Dresden to the east, toward the river. Seal has already been invited. Now I'm asking you. You showed so much kindness to me when you helped me look for that ill-fated ring. I simply must repay you somehow. Besides, Kiana would simply love to meet you and I can't deny her anything. This is great. Say you'll go, Zeke. We'll have so much fun. Aren't you worried about holding the wedding outside the city walls? We chose a place that is still within range of the holy power of the Sword of Valor. My fellow hound hearts will be there, and Kiana and her friends know how to handle themselves. Of course, the location is not entirely risk-free. Nowhere in the world wound is, but it's as protected as it can be, and the territory has been much calmer since your victory. I'll be there. Thank you, Commander, and you, Sela, for the gift. Wedding Meadow has been revealed. So long, my friend. Sela turns to you. Ugh, thank you for coming for a walk with me. It's nice to take a breather between fights sometimes. I hope we have a good time at the wedding. All these battles and divine powers, we need to make sure we don't lose touch with ordinary life. All right, Elon. We'll see you at your wedding. Saxon's just not getting here. I will guide us. Okay. One more person I wanted to talk to you. Sociel, and I think he's hanging out up by the entrance to the citadel, so let's head up there. Okay, Sociel. Sociel is drawing a fortress on a hill with solid walls, looming towers, and knights bearing banners marching through the gates. You don't realize at first that you have seen this place before. The cleric's gift has rendered the lost chapel almost unrecognizable. Good afternoon, Commander. How can I help you? Do you think... Did you think about what the Hell Knight told you? Yes. Sociel shakes his head. Another dead end. I still know nothing. How could Trevor have parted with his shield? I can't imagine. You don't know what your brother has endured in this war. Perhaps the person you once knew is gone. I don't want to believe that. I can't. Not Trevor. With a sudden shiver, Sociel looks down and whispers faintly, Brother... Will I recognize you when I find you? You know, it's not only the Hell Knights who told me the truth. Knight Tirabade refused to tell me anything about my brother's fate while I was serving in Canabras. But after these events, she finally broke her silence and the things she told me. Sociel shakes his head. That he was a good fighter, but a terrible knight and an utterly worthless paladin. He became more and more cruel as time went on. He started caring more about destroying the enemy than protecting the innocent. He gushed over Prelate Hull Run and his witch hunts. Eventually, the goddess's pati patience wore thin. When he beat up some poor fellow for blasphemy, Shaylin took away Trevor's powers. That was a huge blow for him. He left the city, asking only that his disgrace be kept secret from his family. That was why Irabeth didn't say anything earlier. Brother, my brother, but how? He's always been kind, merciful. Where could this cruelty have come from? What do you think of your brother's fate now? I can't wrap my head around what I've learned. It's as if we were talking about a different person altogether. How could he? Why did he give his shield to that she-devil in black armor? Oh, Shaylin, let this all be a mistake. Thanks for talking to me. My pleasure. Okay. So we wrapped things up there. So seal. So we got the wedding to go to with Sela. Uh, we're we're working down this list of companion quests pretty nicely here. Wayward. I'm still not sure who this was even for. I don't know which companion this is. Finian, we're waiting. Uh, we need to take Wolgif up to that spot. So, uh, you know, I was gonna. Head to the uh, Black Blackwater. Is that it? We could also do this. We could take Wolgif. And then Nenio's Nameless Ruins thing. All right. Well, we took care of a few things here in Dresden. Uh, 
still got plenty to do from the look of it. Uh, I know it's slow going, but we're gradually working our way through it. I really appreciate everyone being here, and I hope you'll join me again here next time. Thanks, and bye for now.